to Dayon Rappler. President Aquino wants to be exempted from the election gun ban. The University of Santo Tomas cancels a forum for senatorial candidates after finding out pro-RH politicians are in the panel. And Google Chair Eric Schmidt urges North Korea to open internet access. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. President Benigno Aquino on Thursday files an application to carry a gun from January 13th to June 12th, the election period. The president's hobbies include target shooting. Comelec Commissioner Elias Yusof says Aquino wants the Comelec to exempt the revolver he uses for target shooting. Comelec Resolution Number 9561 prohibits anyone from carrying a gun during the election period. 38 groups are exempt from the ban. The president is not among them. But the Comelec spares Aquino's presidential security group from the gun ban. In the resolution, Comelec continues to provide security to candidates facing death threats. The Comelec limits exemptions to candidates and their family members within the second degree of consanguinity or affinity. Comelec assigns only up to two bodyguards. Liquor makers seek a temporary restraining order to stop the government from implementing the sin tax law. The new law, which prescribes higher tax rates on tobacco and alcohol products, takes effect January 1. The Distilled Spirits Association of the Philippines says distilled spirits makers will be under double taxation because there are taxes imposed on the raw material, ethyl alcohol, and on compounded liquors produced from ethyl alcohol. The SAP says some companies already paid 1.7 billion pesos in excise taxes for its ethyl alcohol inventory. Members of the SAP include Distilleria Limtuaco, San Miguel Corporation, Ginebra San Miguel Incorporated, Tanduay Distillers Incorporated, Emperador Distillers, and Alcohol Distilleries Absolute Chemicals Incorporated. The Philippines may already have a reproductive health law, but the animosity continues. On Thursday, the University of Santo Tomas cancels a senatorial candidates forum because pro-RH law candidates are in the panel. The Forum on Health, Population and Development was organized to discuss issues surrounding the May polls. In a statement, the Student Council Alliance of the Philippines says UST decided to stop the event for, quote, fear the RH law will be discussed in the forum. Participants and netizens react to the news on Twitter. Bayan Muna Representative Teddy Casino says, there goes academic freedom. Leslie de la Cruz says, to think UST is an authority in health and medicine, what the admin did was a clear disrespect to students' right to informed choice. LP candidate Risa Ontivero says the university should be a platform for education, not a breeding ground for ignorance and intolerance. Iloilo Representative Janet Garin talks about the long road to get the controversial reproductive health bill passed into law. Garin is the co-author of the bill in the lower house. She says misinformation and church pressure delayed the bill's passage. She also says legislators tended to make safe decisions for political survival. And I realized that the main problem was political for survival for many of our colleagues yes. there, even if the advocacy is there. It all boils down to political survival at the constituency level. Garin says the bill passed after 14 years because of President Aquino's political will, shored up by his high popularity ratings. I would attribute it to a very popular president with a high satisfaction rating who has no plans of running again. Right. And he wouldn't care if it dips a little because he is confident and we are confident that when people look at what he has implemented, and then people realize that, oh, it was actually for our common good. Four young Filipinos stand trial for the murder of a U.S. Marine in Makati. Now their lawyer wants a gag order on the media. Carlos Santa Maria reports. Six weeks after a U.S. Marine was killed in an upscale subdivision in Makati, four Filipinos stand trial for murder. The defendants plead guilty and claim they acted in self-defense. The incident was caught by the security cameras, but the defense says the footage may have been tampered with. The lawyers want a gag order on the video. 
uh, from day one of uh, the incident, the uh, CCTV came out no, in uh, the social media, particularly Facebook, YouTube, and uh, this is uh, not uh, good no, for uh, the uh, accused because uh, had the uh, pull CCTV been uh, shown, especially the unlawful aggression on the part of uh, the victim uh, George uh, Anilo, then uh, the people uh, would know that uh, there is actually no case of murder, no case of homicide, and uh, it is but uh, a pure act of uh, self-defense on the part of uh, the accused. Defense lawyers suggest the media are biased towards the prosecution. Regional trial court judge Winlove Dumayas is willing to hear the gag request. The prosecution is not worried. We, we will study it uh, more uh, in depth when the motion is filed. George Anankow was a U.S. Marine who served in Afghanistan and the husband of a diplomat. American officials are attending the trial as observers, but so far they have not brought in their own prosecutor. The victim of the uh, murder was an American citizen and a member of the embassy community, so we have very solid reason to be very interested in the prosecution of the suspects. Uh, whenever an American citizen is victimized, we're interested in the prosecution. Uh, Mr. Anakal left behind three small children and a grieving wife and a very, very wounded community, so we're very interested in the outcome of this case. The trial resumes January 17, when the accused will face the security guard who witnessed the incident. The guard is expected to identify the four suspects as the men he saw stabbing the victim after the American engaged them in a fistfight. Whether or not there is a gag order, both sides expect a long trial to determine if in fact the Filipinos killed the American. Carlos Santamaria, Rappler, Manila. In 2014, the first Filipino is flying to space. American astronaut Buzz Aldrin kicks off the AXE Apollo Space Academy in New York Thursday. Astronomy site Space.com says the Academy is an online contest that will send 22 civilian winners, quote, to the edge of space and back aboard a private spaceship. They will be on board the Lynx space plane built by XCOR Aerospace. The contest is organized globally by Unilever and Space XC. Unilever Philippines is taking part in the contest, so a Filipino will definitely be spacebound in 2014. The European Space Agency says an asteroid believed to pose a remote risk of colliding with Earth is 20% bigger than previously thought. Previous estimates put the diameter of asteroid 99942 Apophis at 270 meters, but the agency's Deep Space Telescope shows the asteroid's diameter is 325 meters. NASA says there's a tiny impact risk of about 1 in 250,000 when the asteroid passes closer to the Earth on April 13, 2036. Google chairman Eric Schmidt tells North Korean officials the country would remain behind unless it opened up its internet. Speaking after the mysterious four-day trip, Schmidt says North Korea's decision to be, quote, virtually isolated is going to affect its economic growth. He adds, quote, North Korea has to make it possible for people to use the internet, which the government has not yet done. Other members of the trip describe it as a private humanitarian mission. It was thought the delegation would try and negotiate the release of an American, Kenneth Bay, who had been detained in North Korea. The delegation did not meet the country's young leader, Kim Jong-un, and the most senior official to meet with the group was a vice minister. Many North Korean watchers are puzzled by the presence of Google's top executive in the delegation. The trip was made over the objections of the State Department, which said it was ill-timed. Well, let's now look at Rappler's Rap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number two, is there a national flu epidemic in the United States? On Wednesday, Boston declares a public health emergency after the flu virus kills more than a dozen people. Authorities in Boston confirm more than 700 cases compared to just 70 at this time last year. On Thursday, at least three more states, Montana, South Dakota, and Arizona, report widespread flu bringing the outbreak to 44 states. The CDC says the percentage of people going to the hospital for the flu doubled in the past month. At number five, Rappler's Natasha Gutierrez shows how easy it is to get a gun legally with merchants offering to file fake papers needed for a license. She takes a look at the government agencies who issue the licenses and the reforms needed to prevent outbreaks of violence. Read the full story on Rappler.com. At number six, 
U.S. Vice President Joe Biden tells interest groups, including victims of recent shootings, the White House may step in if Congress won't push tougher gun control measures. Biden is assigned by President Obama to draw proposals to respond to the elementary school shootings in Newtown, Connecticut. He will also meet with the National Rifle Association, the nation's most powerful gun lobby, and other gun rights groups. And at number eight. Speaking your mind out online is common, but in China, where censorship and spin sometimes go hand in hand, discussions on censorship are rare. Some users of Chinese microblogging site Weibo criticize the service's web managers, but one web manager posts an explanation of the service's practices that allows people to speak freely without making the government angry. The post by at Genuine Yu Yang explains. At its early stages, we were under a lot of pressure. We tried to resist and let the messages spread. This is our accomplishment already. The post has since been deleted. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Wrap. A British man is stranded in a Manila airport with no money for a plane ride home. Catherine Visconti tells about his misadventures and the friends he makes along the way. A man stuck in an airport terminal for days it sounds like the plot of Tom Hanks' movie, The Terminal. But life imitated art here at Terminal 1 of Ninoy Aquino International Airport. This departure lounge is where 52-year-old British citizen Gary Austin has been waiting for over three weeks. The worst part of it is, is being stuck here. Gary flew to the Philippines to visit a woman he met online. Checking in for his flight out of the country, he found out that the e-ticket he thought was paid for had been canceled. Out of money from his trip to Cebu, he decided to wait in the airport. While he was there, he made friends with airport janitor Hannah Bulabon. She and other cleaners bring him food during their morning and evening shifts. Mga nasa 10 na rin po yung naging friend niya rito. Mapa boys, mapa girls, friend niya. They haven't got anything themselves, but they still give. And that is a gift. That is a gift you would never find generally in any other country or anywhere around the world. When Rappler catches up with Gary, he has finally visited the British Embassy but says he is no closer to getting home. The embassy tells Rappler they're providing assistance, but Gary says that's limited to a phone call and internet access. But even though they can't help me. Gary says he plans to return to Terminal 1, which has become his temporary home. Unlike a Hollywood movie, this story doesn't have a happy ending yet. Catherine Visconti, Rappler, Manila. Life imitating art. Well, every story on Rappler has a mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel, and your vote comes down to the middle of the front page to the mood navigator, which crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top ten stories that received the most votes on the mood meter. Take a look. The Terminal. Philippine version of the terminal, man stuck in Naioan, the story you just saw, 65% sad, 15% amused, 11% annoyed. Um, other sto top story of the day, stop syntax law, companies ask court, 77% angry, contributing. If you take a look today, the mood of the day, most people are angry. Well, that's Rappler's newscast for today, Thursday, January 10th, 2013. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today. Thank you.